In this video, I'm going to go ahead and talk about three properties of gases, diffusion, effusion, and root mean square velocity. And these are all related because they talk about how fast a gas moves. Okay? Diffusion is um, basically gas moving from high concentration to low concentration. So gases have a tendency, if they're in a high concentration area, they will move to an area of low concentration. And uh, a good way of observing this is with um, cologne, if I spray a lot of cologne in a small area, it's going to spread out across the room and you'll be able to smell it. That is diffusion. Okay? Effusion is when a, you have a gas in a container, okay, in a very sealed container, and then you have a small opening like this, and then you have a vacuum on the outside, and these gas particles will travel to the vacuum. That's effusion. And Graham's Law of Effusion helps us find the rate of effusion for a container, okay? So, Graham's Law of Effusion says that the rate of an effusion of gas 1 divided by the rate of effusion of gas 2 equals the square root of the molar mass of gas 2 divided by the molar mass of gas 1. Let me show you a problem where we'd have to use Graham's Law of Effusion. So let's say we have hydrogen and oxygen. Now before we even start, we should be able to conjecture that oxygen is going to travel, it's going to fuse, sorry, is a lot slower than hydrogen because oxygen is a way more massive particle. It's bigger and it has a bigger mass, so it should fuse slower, okay? So let's say we're given that oxygen fuses at 3 meters per second, and we want to find out how fast the hydrogen will fuse. So before we start this problem, we should label one gas as gas 1, and we should label another gas as gas 2. So I'm going to call oxygen gas 2, and I'm going to call hydrogen gas 1. So we're looking for the effusion of gas 1, so I'm going to call that x, divided by the rate of effusion of gas 2. We know that, so 3 meters per second. Okay. Equals the square root of the molar mass of gas 2. The molar mass of gas 2, that's oxygen, is 32 grams from our periodic, the periodic table. And that's why I'm saying that we should probably label one gas as gas 1 and one gas as, as gas 2, because these are actually flipped. Even though it says rate of effusion of gas 1 over gas 2, here it's equal to the square root of gas 2 over gas 1. We don't want to confuse our numbers, so that's why we should label one gas as gas 1, one gas, one gas as gas 2, so we don't mix up our numbers. Okay? So molar mass of gas 2, which is oxygen, that's 32 grams from the periodic table. The molar mass of hydrogen is 2 grams, from the, about 2 grams from the periodic table. And now we can just solve. So this is x over 3 meters per second divided, equals, sorry, the square root of 32 divided by 2, which is 16. Okay, x over 3 meters per second. The square root of 16 is 4. And then we can multiply this out. And x equals... 12 meters per second. And this makes sense, right, that t this number is bigger than um, the rate of effusion for oxygen because hydrogen is a less massive gas. So that's a good way of checking the answer. Just look at the two gases and make sure the answer makes sense. The least, mass the least massive gas, the one that's smaller in um, molar mass, should obviously travel faster than the one that has more mass. Okay? So our answer makes sense, so this should be 12 meters per second. That's how you use Graham's Law of Effusion. Okay. And then the last property we're going to be talking about, physical property, is root mean square velocity. Root mean square velocity is a way of measuring how fast each individual gas particle, the average velocity of each gas particle within a container. Okay. So if you have a container of oxygen, let's say, and um, at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, and we wanted to find the root mean square velocity of this um, oxygen in, within this container. We're going to go ahead and use this equation. The equation is 3 times the ideal gas constant. We're not going to be using the ideal gas constant that we used in PV equals NRT. We're going to use a different ideal gas constant, and that is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. So 3 times this ideal gas constant, 8.314, it should be on your um, equation sheet. 
but make sure you don't mistake it for 0.0821. We're using 8.314, okay? Times the temperature in Kelvin. If you haven't realized already, when we're talking about gases, we're always talking about Kelvin temperature, not Celsius. So 3RT divided by the molar mass, but this molar mass has to be in kilograms, not in grams. Molar mass in kilograms, don't forget. Okay, so this oxygen at 25 degrees Celsius, how, what is the root mean square velocity of this, okay? So it's gonna equal the square root of three times 8.314 times the temperature in Kelvin, 25 degrees Celsius. If you wanna convert that to Kelvin temperature, we're gonna to have to add 273. So that is 298 Kelvin, okay? So times 298 divided by the molar mass of oxygen in kilograms. Now, from the periodic table, we get that the molar mass of oxygen is 32 grams. We need this in kilograms, so we'll quickly do the dimensional analysis. There are 1,000 grams in one kilogram. So the molar mass of oxygen in kilograms is 0.032. Okay, so we put that here. And then we just solve. Let me quickly do that with my calculator. So three times 8.314 times 298 divided by 0 0.032, the square root of all of that, and that gives us 15.4. So the root mean square velocity of oxygen at 25 degrees Celsius is 15.4 meters per second. So three simple concepts, just a lot of tricks within the equation. The big trick here is understanding that it's rate of gas, rate of fusion of gas one over rate of fusion of gas two equals the molar masses flipped, okay, the square root of that. And here, two important things to remember, temperature in Kelvin and the molar mass in kilograms, not grams. Okay, diffusion to fusion and root mean square velocity is pretty simple.